Hi everybody, I hope you've had a great week since the last time I did a video. Um, we've had a great week here too. We um, have spent a lot of time outside, we've done some learning, we've done a lot of reading, and some we've worked on our math and reading packets that many of you received at school. And we also got a new puppy. I don't know if you can see her back right there. She's sound asleep, she's tiny, she's so cute. Um, and so she's joined our other dog and our cat in our house. So we've got a lot of animals going on, but we miss seeing you. I miss seeing your faces, but I hope you're doing well. And I hope you're enjoying your time with your family and that you're being able to get outside. Today, I'm going to read the book called Iggy Peck Architect. It's another book um, by the author Andrea Beattie and illustrated by David Roberts. And it's about another student or another child who is creative and just wants to learn and wants to try new things. And so let's read about Iggy Peck. Young Iggy Peck is an architect and has been since he was two, when he built a great tower in only an hour with nothing but diapers and glue. Good gracious, Ignatius, his mother exclaimed. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen. But her smile faded fast as a light wind blew, blew past, and she realized those diapers weren't clean. Ignatius, my son, what on earth have you done? That's disgusting and nasty. It stinks. Phew, dirty diapers. But Iggy was gone. He was out on the lawn using dirty clods to build a great sphinx. When Iggy was there, his parents could see his unusual passion would stay. He built churches and chapels from peaches and apples and temples from modeling clay. At dinner one night, to his father's delight, Iggy got a bright gleam in his eye and out on the porch built the St. Louis Arch from pancakes and coconut pie. So Iggy is like an architect, and architects design buildings like apartment buildings, houses, trailers, skyscrapers like you might see in Grand Rapids or Chicago or Detroit, but also things like arches and monuments. Dear Ig had it made until second grade when his teacher was Miss Lila Greer. On the very first day, she had this to say, we do not talk of buildings in here. Gothic or Romanesque, those are fancy words for kinds of buildings. I couldn't care less about buildings ancient, old, or new, she said in her lecture about architecture that it had no place in grade two. So here are all of his classmates. Oh, you know who I see? Ada Twist. She was from the last book that I read, so she's in his class. And then I see Iggy, and he is in the back, and he's building a castle. And his teacher saying, we won't even talk about buildings in this room. I wonder why. Who would be against buildings, right? That might seem severe, but she was sincere. For when she was no more than seven, she'd had a great fright at a dizzying height in a building so tall it scraped heaven. On an architect's tour of the 95th floor, young Lila got lost from the group. Oh, so that's his teacher when she was seven? and she was on a field trip to a building and she got lost from the group. So that would be a scary, a scary situation, right? She was found two days later in a stuck elevator eating cheese with a French circus troupe. Oh my goodness, that must have been a crazy time in there. Her eyes are really big. <gasps> After that day, it's quite safe to say she thought all building lovers were nuts. As a teacher, she taught that above all, one ought to avoid them. No ifs, ands, or buts. So she says no one should ever go in a building. As you might guess, it would cause Iggy stress to hear such terrible talk. But he didn't hear. He sat in the rear while building a castle of chalk. That's pretty creative. You, Iggy Peck, your desk is a wreck. Tear down that castle right now. You will not build in here. Is that perfectly clear? Do you need to see Principal How? Oh, boy. No, ma'am, said Iggy. He lowered his head, and his heart sank down to the floor. 
With no chance to build, his interest was killed. Now second grade was a bore. After 12 long days that passed in a haze of reading, writing, and arithmetic, Miss Greer took the class to Blue River Pass for a hike and an old-fashioned picnic. They crossed an old trestle to a small island nestled in the heart of a burbling stream, but they no sooner passed than the footbridge collapsed and Miss Lila Greer started to scream. We're trapped here, oh my, alas, kids, goodbye. Her eyes rolled back in her head. She dropped to the ground with a vague groaning sound, luckily fainted, not dead. So she is really freaked out. How are they going to get from here to here? She's not helping, though, if she faints on the ground, is she? The class was amazed. They stood there quite dazed, uncertain of what they should do. But one bright young man was off hatching a plan which started with Miss Lila's shoe. Soon, each lad and lass there at Blue River Pass was working together as one. So as you see, they're each getting a job. They're taking whatever materials they can find. And they start putting them together and looks like Iggy drew out the plan and he's pointing to the plan and leading his friends about what to do. <clears throat> and when she came to, Miss Lila Greer knew that something quite brave had been done. She looked in the air and saw hanging there a structure with cables and braces, and on the far side, beaming with pride, were 17 smiling young faces. So they built this whole structure, and they already got themselves across. So only Miss Greer has to get across. Boots, tree roots, and strings, fruit roll-ups and things, some of which one should not mention, were stretched ridge to ridge in a glorious bridge dangling from shoestring suspension. It all became clear to Miss Lila Greer as she crossed that bridge over the stream. There are worse things to do when you're in grade two than to spend your time building a dream. So she realizes that maybe she's been wrong and that it's okay for Iggy Pop to have this dream and to be learning how to build. Now every week at Blue River Creek Elementary in second grade, all the school kids can hear, along with Miss Greer, how the world's greatest buildings were made. The weekly guest speaker in t-shirt and sneakers, he's the weekly guest speaker, talks of buildings from Rome to Quebec. Of course, he's the guy who builds towers from Pi, that brilliant young man, Iggy Peck. So I want to encourage all of you at home this week, just like last week with Ada Twist, to keep asking good questions and see what, you, what kinds of answers you can find. But also use your creativity. Maybe you can build some things at home. Ask your parents first so that they can help you find the right things to use. But you can use, if you have Legos, you can use Legos. You can use blocks. You can use... Um, leftover toilet paper rolls and create something, shoe boxes. If your parents get deliveries, you can use some boxes from there, or you can go outside if you have a place to play outside and find materials to build something. We can always use our brains to be creative and to make new things. I hope you're doing well. I miss seeing you and I miss getting your hugs. And I look forward to next week when I'll have another story to read. Stay healthy, stay safe, and we'll see you soon.